Welcome to my second episode on my series on mobile photography for beginners. In this episode, we're going to do a complete walkthrough of the iOS camera app on the iPhone 12 mini. Let's roll the intro. I'm Luke Bemahalford and let's get started right away by opening the camera app. The quickest way to open the camera from wherever you are inside of the phone is to use your menu from the top, so slide down from the top and then access on the camera icon right here. It's going to open your main camera facing backwards and if possible, always use that one. If you want to use your front facing camera, you can use the option at the bottom right corner right here to turn around the camera, but it's always better to use the back camera because you're going to get better image quality from it. If you want to change between different lenses of the back camera on your iPhone, you can click on the little one times icon here and gonna switch between the wide angle and the normal camera here. And if you have a total photo, it's gonna switch between that one too. If you want to zoom in, you can simply long press this little option and then you can zoom and get exactly the zoom you want. So either wider or more zoomed in. If you want to zoom inside of your shot, I suggest you don't do it directly on the phone and wait to do it afterwards in post-processing by cropping the shot because you're going to get better image quality when doing that. The next option is one that most people don't really understand is that when you click on the image, it's going to set the focus and the exposure automatically based on the place where you click. So if you click on one part of the image, it's going to make sure that that part is perfectly sharp. So that's what is focus. And then it's also going to set the exposure and this exposure is basically how bright or how dark that part of the image is and it's automatically going to choose the best settings to make sure that you can see it well. If you want to lock that thing so you don't want it to change all the time when you're turning around the phone because each time you turn around the phone you have to click again, you can actually click on that part of the image and then long press and you're going to have an option that's going to say AF, uh, EF and AF lock is on. So now even if you turn around it's still going to be using that exposure. To remove this mode simply click again on the square and you're back on the auto mode but now if you turn again you're going to have to change it each time you want to change the focus or change the exposure. Now let's look at some of the menu options. So if we come at the top here and we click on the little icon here, we're going to have more options that are going to appear at the bottom of the screen. So first of all, we have our flash option. So it's better to leave it off most of the times because if you put it on, I think that the results coming from a cell phone and there's flash on a cell phone usually don't look very natural. So I just prefer leaving it off all the time. Then if we look at live photos, I also leave this one off because it takes a little three second video before and after taking the shot, but it takes so much space. And most of the times, especially when taking landscape photos or things like that, it's not very useful in the end. It's different if you have a pet or if you have children and things like that, and reliving these small memories can be useful, but for most people, it's just not worth it. Then you have your aspect ratio, so you should leave it to the default, which is four by three, but if you change it to square or 16 by nine, and you come back and decide afterwards that you took your shot, you want to reframe it, Apple actually saved the full file, whatever you choose here. So you can go back without losing any quality if you need to. So that's a pretty good, cool thing to know. The next option here is exposure. So if you want to make your image darker or brighter, that's where you can do it. So you can bring it down to make it uh, darker or bring it up to make it brighter. Now, if you go back here, the next option is a timer, which is pretty useful if you want to make sure to take a picture of a group or something like that. And finally, the last one here are looks. I personally wouldn't use the looks that are built in right away because you're better to do it afterwards in editing. So now if we come back to our options here, we're going to close. To close the menu that we had at the bottom right here, we're going to click again on the little icon at the top and then we're going to move to our next mode. So the next mode right here is portrait mode. So if we open here and we have a person in front, so we're going to move on the selfie camera to have it enable. It's going to detect my face automatically and track it for us. And then we can simply take a picture here and we're going to have a nice blur in the background. What is really important to understand is that the blur in the background is not natural blur. It's a blur that's created using AI. So that's why sometimes it has a hard time with our hairs or things like that around your subject. Another pretty important thing to understand on the iPhone camera is that it's really optimized for faces and pets. So if you try taking pictures of flowers or anything like that, the portrait mode might not work at all afterwards. There's also different options here if you want to change the type of light that you have. So you can have a studio light, you can have a contour light. So these are all kinds of different lights, but I prefer just leaving it on natural light when I'm outside because that's the type of light that we already have. But if you're inside and you're trying to take some pictures that look a little bit more like if you were in studio, the other modes can be pretty useful. Then if you move on to the panel mode, that's a mode that most people know quite well. So you can simply click on the button and start taking the panorama of what is in front of you. If we move on to our other side, so if we slide down the options right here, we can go back inside of our video mode. So by default, it's on HD 30 frames per second. 
and I personally would leave it on that because that's the quality that is the best when looking at the videos on your phone. But if you're gonna be looking at them on your 4K TV, you can actually click on the little option at the top right corner right here and enable a 4K mode. We could also change the frame rate to get different types of frame rates. But if you don't know much about video, just leave it at 1080p, uh, which is HD and 30 frames per second. And that's gonna be the best settings probably for most people. If you look at the top, Left corner, we also have an option to enable or disable the video light, but again, it's not the best quality of light, so I usually don't use it that much. Then if we look at the other options here, we have slow motion video. So what is important to understand is that if we have on the top right corner, 720p, 440 frames per second, 720p is even worse quality than 1080p. So I would more, probably more use the mode that is HD, 120 frames per second, which you can see I'll offer pretty good slow motion, but in better video quality. Finally, we have a time-lapse mode. And if you don't know what is a time-lapse mode, it's basically everything that is spinning up, so it's everything is going much faster. So this is great if you're walking around, if you're doing a kayak tour or whatever you might be doing, that can be great to really show something that it took a lot of time to film, but in a much faster way. The next mode I want to talk about is the night mode. And for this, you want it to be dark outside, which is not the case right now. So I'm just simply going to block it to trick the camera into thinking it's much darker than it is. Then if you look at the top left corner here, we're going to have an option to select how long the picture that we're taking should be. So if the longer it is in terms of second, the more the camera is going to be stable. So if you're taking a 10 second shot, you're going to get better results at night, but the camera needs to be perfectly steady. So for this, you should hold it with two hands and having your arms on your body to get the best results. If you want to get the best results when using this mode, you definitely need to be using a tripod and this can allow you to get even longer exposures up to 30 seconds and get some pictures of the stars or things like that that can be pretty cool. Now the next thing we're going to look at is actually the more advanced settings and for this we have to go back to our main menu here, go inside of the settings app, go down here, find our camera option and then we're going to see that we have a few other options. So the first one we're going to look at here is format and it's probably better to leave it on most compatible because Apple has a format that works great with their products but doesn't always work great with people that have older phones or older computers that are not Mac computers. So using it on most compatible is going to make the files a little bit bigger but easier to read on different uh, types of devices. Then we have our record options which are the same ones that we had in the menu right before. Um, the other ones, I'm not going to go through all the options here. We can just leave most of the defaults on and they're going to be good. But one you want to have on is the grid. So the grid is really going to help in, when taking pictures and videos. Now you want to make sure that the option view outside the frame is actually off because if you leave it on, it's going to show you something that's a little bit bigger than what the final image is going to be. So by disabling this, you're actually seeing what you're going to get in the final results. All the other options, we're going to leave them on because they're all the options that are make the camera smart and that make the better decisions when taking the images. I hope you enjoyed this little iOS camera walkthrough and I want to say a big thank to my friend Gabrielle for allowing me to use her phone to make this video. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe to the channel for more content on mobile photography for beginners. See you in the next one. Bye bye.